Good day to you, my dear brothers and sisters. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. This is Father Ron Sandoval, SVD, and I welcome you all to this moment with Jesus, the Word of God. Today is June 6, Sunday, and we, the Church, celebrates the solemnity of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Jesus Christ. Samahan niyo po ako sa ating pakikinig at pagdinilay sa salita ng Diyos. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, We will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord, and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and twelve pillars for the twelve tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls, and the other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people who answered, all that the Lord had said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words of his. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 116. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good He has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of His faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all His people. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God? For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant, since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel Antiphone. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him wherever he enters. 
Say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, took the blessing, broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The solemnity, that is, the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ, is a celebration that goes back centuries old. No? Centuries back, it is a centuries old uh, tradition in the church. It was in 1264 that Pope Urban IV instituted this feast dedicated to the holy body and blood of Christ for the universal church, although this is done already by some bishops in their dioceses beginning with 1246. So 1246, ginagawa ng ibang mga obispo, but 1264, for the Universal Church, Pope Urban IV has instituted this feast, and I quote, Although the Eucharist is celebrated solemnly every day, we deemed it fitting that at least once a year it be celebrated with greater honor and a solemn commemoration. Indeed, we grasp the other things we commemorate with our spirit and our mind, but this does not mean that we obtain the real presence. On the contrary, in this sacramental commemoration of Christ, even though in a different form, Jesus Christ is present with us in his own substance. While he was about to ascend into heaven, he said, And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. From Matthew 28, 20. No, from Pope Urban IV of the 12th century. So, ang tagal na. The celebration has been a very long tradition already in the church. And we commemorate Corpus Christi, the most holy body and blood of Christ. We put into focus the Eucharistic celebration that we do every day, the Masses that we do every day. And of course, for most people, the Sunday Mass that we really attend. No? Um, it is a remembrance and it is a covenant covenant between God and the people. You know? And so if you go back to the first reading, the covenant was made through Moses um, reading to them the commandments of God and the people, the Israelites, answering we are going to heed the commandment of the Lord. We are going to obey the Lord. And so it became a kind of, yeah, more than just an agreement, but a covenant between God and his people. And this covenant of relationship is sealed with the blood of an animal, no? An animal donating the blood. The blood is the bearer of life, we know that. And the covenant is sealed with the blood of life, no? Look at that. So it is not, as I've said, just a mere agreement between two parties, but a covenant, which means they went into a deeper relationship. The two parties are into a deeper relationship with one another sealed with the blood of an animal. And that was the content of the first reading. Very, very important. God the Father, Yahweh, has made a covenant. I am your God and you will be my people. That is the relationship, the covenant relationship between Yahweh and the Israelites. In the second reading, a new covenant was established. A new covenant. And the establishment of this is through Jesus offering his blood. It is no longer the, because in the first reading, <laughs> um, the blood of the animals are collected in a bowl, no? And half of it is being poured into the altar, into the altar that was made by Moses. 
um, the altar of worship presents God. And so half of the blood is poured or sprinkled into the, into the altar and half is sprinkled to the people. Yun yun ang ibig sabihin ng, they are being sealed with the blood. And so both blood from the same from the same animal no, um, is being poured into the altar representing God and to the people sealed with the blood. In the second reading, it is no longer the blood of the animal that is being uh, that has sealed this new covenant, new covenant made by Jesus while he was dying on the cross. You know? He offered his life, his body, his blood, he offered for our salvation to the Father in complete obedience. You know? And so it is an offering of Jesus that is one, perfect, complete, irrevocable, you know? forever and ever. It will never change. And that he has made with the Father for us. No? And that's why he will be the great intercessor to the Father. And it is his blood already, not the blood of any animal. If that any, if the belief before is that the blood of the animal sprinkled to the people will, will make them um, yeah, partner of God, so to speak, no? With Coven, they will be the people of God. And the sprinkling of the blood will make them cleanse from their sins, no? Now, in the new covenant, if, of course, it's the blood of Jesus that will really free us from our sins. You could probably think, how can the blood of animals cleanse us from our sins? But that was their belief in the olden times. But with Jesus, really, the blood of Jesus can really cleanse us. No? And so, that is the new covenant, a new and eternal covenant that Jesus has made for God and for us. He is in between us. He is both man and God, and therefore it was a perfect, complete, and eternal covenant that He has made. And so we are children of the Father. Jesus is our brother, but our Lord and God, and we are children of the Father, and the Father will be always our God. So it is a renewal of that covenant, and that is what we renew also whenever we attend the Eucharist. Now the Eucharist is the re remembering of that covenant. Whenever we celebrate the covenant, Whenever we attend the Mass, we are renewing, and I hope that we are serious with that, that whenever we receive the body and blood of Jesus during Holy Communion, after receiving His Word in the liturgy of the Word, we are renewing our covenant, our promise to be the children of God the Father, and, and doing our lives, also offering our lives just like Jesus, for God and for our love for our brothers and sisters. And so that covenant will go on and on as long as we celebrate the Eucharist. Kaya napakahalaga ng misa, no? The church says this is the peak and the summit of our Christian living. It begins with the Eucharist and it ends with the Eucharist. The peak and the summit of our Christian life. Ganun ka-importante ang misa. Hindi lang, it's, it's just, just an ordinary celebration. It is a commemoration, a remembrance of what happened 2,000 years ago. Of the covenant that Jesus has made for us and to the Father. And every moment we celebrate the Mass, they are being brought to the present moment. And so the grace, the benefits, everything that we receive and that 2,000 years ago in that first Eucharistic celebration, we also receive now. And we continue to become our uh, brothers and sisters in Christ and the children of the Father. And so, our openness and attentiveness to the Eucharistic Lord changes us internally so that hopefully we can also witness to Him externally by walking with Jesus, praying with Jesus, and becoming His witnesses and companions in this world. Amen. Let us pray with the fullest trust to God our Father, for He has chosen us as his partners in life set free by the blood of his son let us say lord be close to us your people for the pope for bishops and priests that they may give to their people not only the bread of the eucharist and the word of god but also the bread of themselves let us pray lord be close to us your people for all christian churches that they may become one at the table of the lord we pray, Lord, be close to us, your people. For the nations who have more than others in food and human resources, that they may consider it a task of justice to share with others that 
have less and to help them forward on the road of human and economic development, we pray. Lord, be close to us, your people. For our Christian communities, that rich and poor, high and low, tenants and landlords, and most especially here in Vienna, the friends and members of the Philippine Sigotas Dins Gemeinde, may share alike in the Eucharist and become responsible for one another in one covenant of justice, love, and peace. We pray, Lord, be close to us, your people. For all of us, that the Eucharist may become more and more the source of our strength and unity and our commitment to one another, we pray. Lord, be close to us, your people. In silence, we bring to God our personal needs and concerns. Lord God, be close to us. Keep nourishing us with the body and blood of your Son, that we may grow in your everlasting life, now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Maraming pong salamat sa inyong pakikisa sa ating pagninilay ngayong araw na ito. Um, here in Vienna, we're going to have our 11 o'clock Mass. It will be live-streamed and 3.30 in the afternoon both in the Kepler-Platz Church and 5.30 p.m. in Floridsdorf Church. After the Mass, we're going to have a procession of the Blessed Sacrament in the Church with the Eucharistic Blessing at the end. Makita-kita po tayo. Magandang araw at magandang buhay sa inyong lahat. <laughs>